Welcome back to MovementProfessional.com. So I recently did a video uh, entitled The Three Principles of Anterior Expansion, um, referring to the pump handle mechanics on the, the front of the, the sternum. Uh, and I got a question off of that video about what are some of the principles for the opposite, which would be posterior expansion. So I've done some other videos in the past that you can go through the YouTube channel and check out uh, using a skeleton to just show what posterior expansion really means, what the area that we're referring to uh, is right between the shoulder blades. So you can call it the interscapular region. It's also referred to as a dorsal scapular region, but it basically it's the thoracic region between the shoulder blades. So just like with the uh, anterior expansion, there are generally three principles and we could basically just reverse the principles from anterior to look at posterior expansion. So to review for anterior expansion, we were looking at making gravity our friend. So we did that with anterior expansion by being more in a prone position with the hips a little bit higher than the shoulders or a quadruped, something where gravity would move the sternum forward and assist in moving the sternum forward. And then the second principle was that we didn't want to over peck. We didn't want to use the muscles in the front of the chest near the sternum too much because that gets in the way of the, the motion that we're trying to create. So any muscle contraction is going to kind of move us in the opposite direction of more motion. All right, so then the third principle was then what shoulder motions do we want to try to promote to get more anterior expansion? Well, in that case, it was moving into extension, it was also at about 90 degrees of flexion with protraction or a little bit higher, we can create a, a squeezing of the, the scapulas to the outside of the rib cage and that promote a little bit more expansion and then any type of movement into internal rotation behind the body. So with posterior expansion, we're still gonna to wanna to make gravity our friend, but we're gonna do it in the opposite way here where we're gonna elevate the hips, but we're gonna to try to have the back toward the ground. So more supine positions, more bridge-like positions. Uh, the Looking at the muscle activity that we gotta to try to calm down, we we're looking at the retractor. So the rhomboids are the prime area, and then on top of the rhomboids, we have the upper trap, middle trap area. So basically, we don't want the shoulder blades to come together. We're trying to keep them open. So muscles that do that, we gotta to try to calm them down. And then the shoulder motions that we're gonna to try to tackle are gonna be things that move us away from midline. So it'll be basically going into flexion overhead, external rotation, abduction away from the body. And we wanna do that without closing down the backside. So the way that we can look at posterior expansion, the idea here is to allow our limbs to move away from the body, but we still wanna keep the space that's in the trunk region or in the thoracic spine, we wanna keep that open. We don't want that to close down or that actually brings us more towards midline. All right, so a couple exercises that we can use to really enhance these principles or understand these principles would be starting with the chair in this 90-90 position uh, just because it allows us to more easily get a, an inversion towards the uh, posterior region where, where we're trying to open up. So as the hips come up, this allows for gravity to kind of be our friend and, and expand through there. So some of the things I really like to work with to at least get people started with feeling posterior expansion is a bridge roll down, roll up series. So as we go up into a roll up bridge, the idea should be that it is a segmental sacrum lumbar thoracic bridge on the way up. As I get up higher, I feel more of my upper back into the ground. So I have more contact here and then I can add arm motions to this. So first thing I wanna do is maybe reach up just to open up the scapulas, but then I'm gonna move into this more horizontally abducted position and the goal would be to stop whenever I feel the shoulder blades close down. All right, and then I can just exhale as I bring the hands in, inhale as I open. I can also do that moving it towards flexion. Inhale overhead, trying to keep that space open. Exhale as I bring it down. And then I can also go into some type of external rotation where I'm going, elbows are reaching away. I'm trying to move into external rotation, but I don't want to feel retraction where the shoulder blades come together. All right, so this can be hard to hold up here for a while. So what works quite well is to actually just rest the arms in a position that can be comfortable on the ground. So I'm gonna bias horizontal abduction here, reach the arms long, trying to open the space between the shoulder blades. As I go up into this bridge, I can feel much easier the space between the shoulder blades on the ground. And then what I'm gonna to try to do is roll down segmentally, thoracic to lumbar to sacral, but keep reaching the arms away from each other, keep thinking about 
opening up the scapula. So horizontal abduction typically is the easiest place to start because there'll be the least mobility limitations to at least get the arms on the ground. But then we can also go up a little bit higher into scaption where we're still trying to keep the shoulder blades away from each other and then roll down through that posterior region, the interscapular region. And then the hardest position tends to be moving into this overhead position in with an externally rotated bias. Getting up here, it's much easier to keep contact with the fingers on the ground when you're up in the bridge. And then as you roll down, the idea would be to elongate the arms so you don't lose that contact as you roll down or the arms don't pop up as you go down. So I like to think of this as a bridge roll down series that I'm trying to tackle all of those motions that are biased towards external rotation moving away from the body. A way to get even more feedback to that area would be to use a half roller. So we can do the same exercise, but now we have the half roller right between the shoulder blades, right in that interscapular region. So a first drill here just to make awareness or to build awareness of that area would be to just protract, feel the shoulder blades move away from the foam roller, retract, feel the shoulder blades move towards it with a little bit of a bias towards a posterior tilt here, just so we could make sure that we're taking the arch out of the lumbar spine. All right, from there, we do the same exercise where we create a elongation. As we reach into horizontal abduction, we can turn the thumbs down towards more external rotation. But whenever we feel the shoulder blades close down on the roller, then we know to stop. And that's just our end of motion. So the mobility work happens through an elongation, not a direction towards the ground. Because if, if we direct everything towards the ground, we're immediately going to retract and extend. So retract the scapulas, extend the spine. So we want to make sure we maintain that opening, keep reaching away, only take it as far as we can. If we turn into external rotation, make sure that nothing closes down there. We can also do that going overhead and towards flexion. Same rules apply. Don't let that area close down where the roller is between the scapula. Okay. To be more targeted than the broad roller there, we can use a massage ball and just go one side at a time. So it'd be the same kind of exercise. You have to be able to tolerate the pressure to the ball first. So it's good to use a soft ball, maybe even on a soft mat. But now I'm going to create that little tilt. Now I have pressure on my left interscapular region. And then I'm just going to go through the same thing. And I'll, I'll notice with a little bit more specificity when I start to close down or when my rhomboids or uh, traps start to turn on to block all these motions going overhead. All right, so that's a whole sequence of things that you can do using that 90-90 position with the bridge roll up, roll down series, and then using feedback through either a massage ball or the half roller. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can go to moveitprofessional.com. I'll see you next time.